All right. Have you ever had a pile of coins and you're like, I wonder how much money's in that pile? I know this probably happens, you know, <laughs> hardly ever anymore because we use uh, plastic to make all our transactions. But back in the day, we used to have our pile of coins that we would count. So some of the problems in our assignment this week are to find the value of that pile of money. And uh, there's a way to do it. You are not finding out how many coins are in the pile. We're wanting to know the value of how much the pile is worth so we can go shopping um, or divide them up evenly and put them in Easter eggs. You never know what people do with their coins. I mean, hey, kids get excited. Oh my gosh, I have M&Ms and quarters. This is amazing. So to find the value of a pile of coin, coins, <laughs> multiply the number of coins of a certain denomination by the value of that denomination. All right, so if I have 20 quarters, multiply it by the amount of a quarter, 25 cents. If I have 10 dimes, multiply it by 10 cents. Nickels, if I have 17 nickels, multiply it by 5 cents. And however many pennies you have by 0 0.01. So um, the assumption is, of course, that you are familiar with U.S. dollars and coin amounts. If you are not, here's the values that you'll be working with. I know they're stated somewhere in the textbook, but just in case, they're right here. Um, and you have to use the decimal format. Please do not use the cent symbol because that will throw you off in the end. All right, once you get the value of how their quarter total, your dime total, your nickel total, your penny total, all you do is add them up and that'll give you the value of the whole pile of coins. See, this is so intuitive. You've got this. Here you go. So I want you to find the value of a pile of coins that contains 25 quarters, 8 dimes, and 13 nickels. Go, 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 go. Remember, you multiply the number of coins of a certain denomination by the value of the denomination. Now, these are rather intuitive because I'm giving you how many are in each pile. I know we could probably go to the second grade classroom and say, hey, second graders, figure this out. And they'd be like, we got this down because they're going to do this. They won't write an equation, but what they're doing is they're going to say, I have 25 quarters times 25 cents. They might even break them into groups of four and add the dollars up and then they'd have one left over. They're going to take the eight dimes and multiply it by 10 cents. And they'll take their 13 nickels and multiply it by 5 cents. They're not going to write an equation. You do not have to write an equation. You just need to find the amount. And 25 quarters is 625. Eight dimes is 80 cents. And 13 nickels is 65 cents. And when you add it all up, your pile of coins is $7.70. Not too bad. But when you get to exercise B, something changes. It looks like they've made typos all over the page. What? Find the value of coins, of a pile of coins, that contains X quarters, W minus seven dimes, and nine pennies. So what of that did you understand? Nine pennies. That's right. We're all good. We got nine pennies. It's nine cents. But what is this X quarters? That means I didn't count them. And W minus seven probably means Walter counted them and he says, um, I have seven less than what I'm going to tell you. I don't know. I'm, I, don't, <laughs> I should have come up with something better. In this example, we aren't given the exact number of quarters or the exact number of dimes. So my question to you is, will you be able to find the exact value? No, you are not. You are just going to write how to find the value if you knew what x was equal to and what w is equal to. So we need to write how. So we are going to write an equation to find out how. And we're going to use the same thing we did just a minute ago. We're going to multiply the number of coins of a certain denomination by the value of that denomination. Okay, so I have x quarters. What am I going to multiply x by? 0.25. That's correct. 25 cents, 0.25. I have W minus 7 dimes. What am I going to multiply it by? 0.1 or 0 0.10. All right, so we can write it as an equation. The value of the pile of coins, the mystery pile of coins, we do not know how many quarters there are. There are X of them times 0.25 plus W minus 7 times 10 cents. I really wish Walter would just tell us how many he has in his hand. Um, and then 9 times 0.01. Now, you can't leave it in this format. And the reason is you have to use the distributive property. And there was an additional tutorial that I posted. Um, it was optional. Um, however, you may want to 
you really do need to know the distributive property and how to combine like terms before you go to the gathering on Thursday. Um, so if you don't know how to do those two things, you may just want to quit the video now and go watch that one. <laughs> so the distributive property, we need to give this 10 cents to everybody in the parentheses via multiplication. 10, sign, 10 cents times W and 10 cents times take away 7. I think I'm not even speaking clearly. So you still have X times 25 cents, but we write it in proper format. Proper format in math is the number goes before the letter. Yes, we do have math grammar is what I like to call it. And then we did 10 cents times W. See right here, 10 cents times W, the number goes before the letter. And then we have negative 7 or take away 7 times 10 cents, which is this take away 70 cents. And then we had those 9 pennies, and that's like exactly, we like, I know this one, is 9 cents. All right, you're still not done. What? We need to combine like terms. So we look for matches. So are there any other numbers with an X next to it? Nope, nope. Nope. So this one doesn't have any matches, so it's pretty much going to stay. Do we have any other numbers with a W? Nope. And just because you have an X doesn't mean you can combine with the W. No, no, no. And here I have a negative 70 cents and a positive 9 cents. These are just regular old numbers. You can combine those. So what is negative 70 cents plus 9 cents? It would be negative 61 cents. That is as far as we can go. So if we do find out how many quarters, I can just put it in here and then do 25 cents times that. And if Walter would tell me how many dimes he has, then we could go ahead and multiply it by the 10 cents and then subtract that 61 cents. So that's what you do if they don't actually tell you how many are in the pile. So should we do another one? Yes! Oh, I knew you'd want to. That's why I prepared one more for you. I have another pile of coins. And there are Y pennies, F nickels, and F plus 5 dimes. That's right. I'm not telling you how much there are of any of them. <laughs> so the strategy is the same. You multiply the number of coins of a certain denomination by the value. All right, I have Y pennies. What am I going to multiply Y by? That's right, 0 0.01. Plus, what am I going to multiply my nickels by? F times 0 0.05. <laughs> And I have F plus 5 dimes. So we have Y times 0 0.01, F times 0 0.05, and we have this quantity F plus 5 times 10 cents. We're just going to say Fran. We, Fran knows how many nickels she has, and Fran is also control of the dimes, and she says, well, there's five more dimes than there are nickels. So that's all I'm going to tell you. All right. So we're going to dis use the distributive property. We're, basically, we're going to use our multiplication. Y times 0 0.01 is 0 0.01Y. We're going to put it in proper format. F times 0 0.05 is 0 0.05F. But right here, I have a quantity. I have this adding part. And I have to give the 10 cents to the F and the 10 cents to the 5. So F times 0 0.01 or 0 0.10 is basically 0 0.10F. And I have to do 5 times 10 cents. And 5 times 10 cents is 50 cents, so 0.5. You did it. Ta da! All right. Now you got to combine like terms. So let's look for any matches. Are there any other y's? Da, 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 da. Nope. So the 0 0.01y stays by itself. Are there any other f's? Well, by golly, there's one right next to it. So I have 0 0.05f plus 0 .10, 0 0.10f. So I have 5 cents plus 10 cents, which is 15 cents times f. And then there's just this 50 cents here. That is as good as it gets until we find out how many pennies. And Fran reveals how many nickels she has, so we can get it the rest of the way. All right. So that is how you find the value of a pile of coins. Ta-da! All right. Good luck with those. Have some fun.